Get my six. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Homesteading Off the Grid, the most popular homesteading channel on the entire internet that has absolutely nothing to do with homesteading. Forgive me if I do a lot of this throughout this video. I'm surrounded by gnats. Uh, and there's some farming going on back here on the fields behind the woods. So I hope the tractor noise isn't too loud. Who wants to hear a creepy story? It's been a while, right? This is one of those uh, that you can't explain. It's, you know, Mark Twain, one of my favorite writers, is known for having said, uh, fiction is much more difficult to write than nonfiction because fiction has to at least make sense. So, this is a true story shared with me recently uh, by a buddy of mine. Um, this is going to be converted into a longer, I'm going to fill in some gaps. I mean, this is one of those stories that you can take and run with if you are a writer such as myself uh, and just really turn it into a real jewel. And I'm going to do that at some point. It, it will be a fictional story based on fact. It won't be full length novel, but certainly short story, maybe 5,000 words. So here's the deal. Uh, I was talking with a friend of mine recently, and I was we were talking about how fast time goes by. He's already in his early 50s. I'm going to be 50 in like two months, a little more than two months. And we're just talking about, you know, on our Sick Twisted Humor page on Facebook, there's a post that I'll share once a week or so, or every two weeks. It says, life is like a roll of toilet paper. The closer you get to the end, the faster it goes. Isn't that true? I know that 74% of you watching this video uh, are my age or older. We have an older audience. And it's amazing. Like today, as a matter of fact, this very day of this recording, September 2nd, uh, 2023, is the seven year anniversary of my family and I buying this house and property where we live. Uh, if you've been here for a while, I'm going to give you a spin. I'm up at the campground. But remember, it was a hay field? Yeah, we camped out up here last night. There's our fire pit. Our house, as you can barely see it right there, uh, This we've reforested half the property. Three acres have been reforested. We've kept the other three acres as field. Planted fruit orchards. Literally planted over a thousand trees and let more than, we let several thousand just grow back up. So seven years and there's the upper trail and that's where we sleigh ride in the winter it's pretty steep and then it's funny we planted these four apple trees actually there were six originally the first weekend we lived here so i guess they're seven year old seven years old now too they haven't really done much of anything but we got more fruit off of all of our other we've got 60 other well 68 other fruit trees down there we planted but we just we can't believe it's been seven years so we were talking about this and uh my buddy says you know though he says, you don't look so bad for 50. Uh, and I told him, you know, it's got to be lifestyle. I mean, a lot of people will say jeans, jeans this, jeans that. No, it's not. I have um, sisters who are not uh, fit. Um, and I'm not trying. We just have different lifestyles. They've never really been into fitness and exercise and diet uh, is not the best. And, and, but we have the same genes. So it's choices. It's lifestyle based on choice. Um, and he says, you know, my grandfather used to run cause he knows I run. He goes, my grandfather ran and he lived to be in his, into his late seventies. Now he, he died of cancer, his grandfather. And this is who the story revolves around. Um, he got cancer and anybody can get that. I could get that tomorrow. And, and you know, uh, and a lot of people say, oh, just people that aren't fit who, are, who don't exercise. They would say stuff like, uh, just imagine he did all that exercising just to get hit by a bus when he was 40 or did all that exercise and got cancer and died when he was, you know, 37 or had an aneurysm. Yeah, that stuff can happen to anybody. But, you know, number two things here, that's no excuse for you to not be fit and take care of yourself because just the odds of those things happen to you are so slim to none, it's probably never going to happen. And number two, those folks, those things do happen to who are healthy and who are fit and who do watch their diet and exercise regularly. Their quality of life while they were here was much higher than it would have been if they hadn't lived that healthy lifestyle. So yeah, I could get the big C. 
at any time and, and, and be taken from my family and taken from this earth. But I'll tell you what, while I'm here, I very much enjoy being fit, being healthy, being able to walk up my driveway without being out of breath by the time I get to the end. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> this guy's grandfather was an avid runner and he, he, he lost his battle with cancer in his late seventies. They had him at, with his home hospice care because they knew he was at the end there in the, in the final weeks. But before that, he had been an avid distance runner. My friend told me that even though his grandfather was in his late 70s, when he was diagnosed with the cancer, it was a very aggressive form that, that took him out quickly. Uh, most people thought he looked like he was in his 50s. And my friend said it was because his grandfather ran. He actually mount, he, he biked, he did cycling, swam, he, he did the occasional triathlon. But he was kind of like a living legend in, in, in the family because he didn't start running until he was in his mid-30s. He never played sports as a, as a child. He grew up on a farm, um, had to help with, with the farm work. So there was no football, basketball, track and field for him. You know, Halloween's a coming. It's September now. October's next. That's my month. So anyway, he had uh, joined the military, and he'd become an officer. I think it was the Navy. Uh, and, you know, when you join the military, you, you, you do what's called PT. You have to pretty much become fit. I mean, whatever. I'm... <sighs> biting my tongue. I was thinking back on my old National Guard unit I deployed with. Our E7 couldn't fit in a Humvee with his body armor on. That pencil whipping those PT scores. Boy, that's a story for another time. Now, I've told that one years ago. Go read my book, Off Switch. It's all in there. Um, so, what he found, this friend's grandfather, was that when he started running because he was in the Navy, he actually liked it. He, he enjoyed it. And he was good at it. He started entering local road races, 5Ks, 10Ks, actually ran some marathons. And he ran a marathon in two hours and 28 minutes when he was in his mid-30s, not coming from a running background. Now, how fast is that? To qualify for the U.S. Olympic trials, you got to go under 220. He was within eight minutes of that as an almost 40-year-old man who did not have a running background. So... This is a guy who was, he obviously was naturally gifted. He obviously trained very hard, very efficiently, uh, very productively. And he said that his grandfather always talked about how he wished he had gotten into running in his youth because he believes, or he believed, he's passed on now, that he could have run a sub four minute mile. And he was at an age when he passed away that, had that happened, had he done that, he might have been the first person to do it. Sir Roger Bannister of England did it May the 4th of 1954, I think it was. And it's been years since I've seen this, so forgive me if I'm wrong. And the first American to do it was a guy named Jim Ryan, who was actually in high school when he did it. An easy name to remember. That's also the name of the president of the University of Virginia, Jim Ryan. Different different guy, though, but the Jim Ryan at UVA runs every morning. It's one of the things that a lot of the locals will do. They go running with President Ryan every morning. I haven't done it. I'm 30 minutes out of town, and I think they go at 6 a.m. <laughs> I'm not going. No, I'm running by that time, but I'm not going to drive 30 minutes in town. I mean, sometimes I do, but I'm just, it's not going to happen. <clears throat> so this guy's grandfather could have potentially been the first sub four minute miler in the world, or at least in the U.S. Jim Ryan ran under four, uh, I think about uh, less than a year after Roger Bannister did it. There's this guy in Sweden. He finished second in the 1500 in the world championships last week, and he won the 5,000. I can't remember his name because I can't pronounce it. He broke the world record in the two miles or, or like about a month ago. It was the, I think it was the, the second, or it was the oldest uh, rec world record in track and field. He ran two miles in seven minutes and 53 seconds. That's two sub four minute miles back to back without stopping. Incredible. The record had stood for 29 years. He just broke it. When it was set, originally this guy wasn't alive. This guy's 22 years old. So the record was seven years older than him. So 
So here's the creepy part. Here's where it gets eerie. You're like, why are you rambling on and on? You know, I unsubscribed from your channel years ago because you do that. Those morning rambles. And I came back because I like the creepy stuff. And here you are rambling on and on and on. <sighs> Somebody's getting ready for deer season over there. Um, so you've probably read October Nights, uh, part one, part two. If you haven't, you probably watched the stories on the channel. Um, I'm going to read some of that to you again this October. A lot of good stories coming up. You'll remember Jim Brown. Jim Brown is uh, the in and out character who's in several stories in the first one. In the first book, he's just in the in the prologue. Um, in the second book, in the sequel, but he's a he's a ghost, and um, he he look he's a very pale skinned young man. And he dresses like a Mennonite, and he rides this old bicycle. My friend who's telling me the story about his granddad had never read my books October Nights, and I don't think he watches my YouTube channel. He's one of those people when I met him years ago. We've known each other for a few years. When he asked me what I, I did and I told him, he just laughed and asked me, no, what do you really do like for your money? And I told him, social media content creation. <clears throat> so, and he was like, what, really? You guys make money off of that? <laughs> if you only knew, brah. If you only knew, you'd quit your day job. So anyway, um, his grandfather was in his final days and he had gone to spend some time with his grandparents. Uh, this was probably 20 years ago. He and his grandmother had gone into town and it was just before Christmas. They lived out in the country, his grandparents. They come home from town and as they pull in the drive, and, and, and start to get out of the car, somebody comes out of the house. It's this fair-skinned young man, dressed like a, like a Quaker, really, gets on a black bicycle and starts pedaling down the driveway and just pedals right past him. Doesn't look at him, doesn't wave, doesn't acknowledge him. And they're like, who in the heck was that? Well, and, and the grandmother was like, we left the house locked. Well, they get out of the car and they go to the front door and they just twist the knob assuming it's unlocked because this guy was just in the house. Well, the door was still locked. And whoever this guy was, he, he wouldn't have had a key. So they look back down the driveway and this is when they realize there are no bicycle tracks. There are no bicycle tracks. So uh, they go in the house and again, the, the, the grandfather, even after he got out of the military, continued to run. It had become his passion. And... He won so many road races. He was in his 50s and still finishing first out of hundreds of people. He was beating college students. And so they go through the living room and the living room's just, he's got trophies all over the place, pictures of him finishing marathons and road races. And he had always talked about, again, how he wished he had discovered running sooner because he believed he could have been a sub four minute miler. Well, they get into the guest room, which is a downstairs guest room. And this is the, the room that they had set up for hospice. And his grandfather's dead. He, he's, he's dead. They had him hooked up to all kinds of machines. And there's the, you know, the heart rate monitor. Beeps, flatline him. But he said the strangest thing was that his grandfather had like this, well, he's covered in sweat. The bed, it's almost as if somebody had dumped a bucket of water on the bed. Uh, it turns out it was sweat. They thought it might have been water, but th they had the doctor come. It was sweat. And he had this look on his face of uh, <clears throat> exertion and uh, the combination of exertion. How did he say it? Exertion and achievement. Almost as if he had crossed a finish line in first place. Well, when the doctor came, he was going through the EKG readings. And he says, this is weird. This is off the freaking charts. And the grandmother and grandson, of course, were like, well, what? He says the heart rate, basically, to sum it up, he had got, his heart rate had gotten up above 160 beats per minute. Uh, and it, did, it didn't just happen. So because at first they thought, well, maybe he had a heart attack here. He, he's dying of cancer. Maybe it was a massive heart attack took him out. No. The doctor looked back on the EKG chart showing the buildup to this 160 beats per minute, which was sustained for about two and a half minutes. 
but he could see the build from where this guy's heart rate went from a resting heart rate of probably 50 beats a minute, because remember, the old guy was in shape, to where it started to build and build and build until he expired. And the amount of time that passed from where the build started until the, the man passed away was three minutes and 59 seconds. It's as if, and the doctor said, it's as if this man had just run a four minute mile and then died when he crossed the finish line. That is what the technology and the science was saying. This, after my friend and his grandmother saw a pale skinned young man dressed like a Quaker getting on a black uh, gearless bicycle going down the driveway and not leaving any tracks. It's like he got his he got his uh, final wish and he got his he ran his final mile and he did it in under four minutes. See you next time for more.